Why hello there and welcome back to another episode of Trader Steve's journey across Gilinor to collect as many rare items as he can get his grubby little mitts on. Trader Steve is starting his journey in the Grand Exchange chunk, but for every new rare item he can add to his collection that's worth more than 1 mil, he can unlock a new adjacent chunk, with Trader Steve's ultimate goal, obtaining a quest cape. Now, Trader Steve has been locked in Mauritania for multiple months, but finally, he has broken free. We've set a new long-term goal, and that's completing Monkey Madness 2. I want to do this for a multitude of different reasons, but the primary one is unlocking one of the best moneymakers in the game, killing demonic gorillas. Zenite shards are going for more than 10 mil right now, and there's a ton of other reasons why completing Monkey Madness 2 will be great for this account. Now the quest has many different skill requirements, and in the last episode we dealt with probably the most difficult one, 69 Slayer. Now though it was difficult, I was ready for that and had a plan, but one of these skill requirements has actually turned out to be equally as hard, and that's Hunter. I actually have very few ways for me to train Hunter currently with the amount of chunks I have unlocked, and no matter what direction I go with, I need to unlock a chunk or two just to get a Hunter training method. Because currently my only way to train a hunter is Tears of Gothics, and yeah, I don't want to wait a year just to get 60 hunter through Tears of Gothics, so we gotta find a better way. So we have to wait an entire week until we can do Tears of Gothics again, so in the meantime, we're gonna try to get everything set up as best as possible. My first thought was trying to get any other experience lamps possible that I can put into Hunter. One that's actually accessible right now is simply by completing X marks the spot, a novice level quest. We did it in about 10 seconds. We had all the chunks to do it as well, and this is an experience lamp you can put in anything. We're going to put it into Hunter. Unfortunately, it's only for 300 experience, but that will still get us a level, but that's still a level closer. Okay, so here is the plan, at least so far. To realistically get my hunter all the way to 60, I need to unlock an actual training method, and probably the best one that is the nearest is Swamp Lizards. Swamp Lizards are in Mortania, and I have most of Mortania unlocked, unfortunately not the actual hunter spot, but there's no issue unlocking that chunk because it is required for Desert Treasure 1, which is a quest we're definitely going to have to do. So we can unlock this hunter spot here, and that's going to be all well and dandy once we get to 29 hunter, but that's a bit of an issue. So divide this down into a few different steps. Now like I was saying, I was first looking for any experience lamps I could put into Hunter, but unfortunately, pretty much every single experience lamp in the game requires you to have at least 30 in the skill, which doesn't do me much good because at that level I will have already unlocked Swamp Lizards. However, there's actually one exception to that. There is an experience lamp that you can put into any skill at level 20, and it gives you 5,000 experience, so that's a significant amount. And that's the combat achievement reward. By completing the easy combat achievements, I can get a 5,000 XP lamp I could put into Hunter at level 20, and that will save me so much time. Now thanks to the combat achievement point rework, I think I'm actually able to complete the easy combat achievements with just three bosses. And that's lucky because that's the only bosses I've unlocked. Those would be the Barrows Brothers, Briofita, and Obor. But I think if I complete every single combat task, I should get enough points from that to complete the easy combat achievements. So we're gonna go ahead and do a few of the easier ones here. Luckily I had a couple mossy keys in the bank already. So that's quick cutters done for two points. And there's fighting as intended simply for doing it in a free to play world. <laughs> Stupid auto retaliate made me fail this task already twice, but we should get it this time. We just simply have to kill Bria Fida with poison. And that's another point. Uh, I think he unfroze, but that's okay. That's an Obor kill done with. We got another two points for squashing the giant. We'll unfortunately have to go ahead and get another giant key, but that's fine. So Barrows is primarily where I'm going to get most of my points. I have to do every single achievement here. There's no questions about that. Luckily, we're pretty high level now, so we should be able to get them done. No issues. So there's three points just for completing an entire Barrows run with zero prayer. Oh, thank God we got this Light Bear. Finally, we can put it to some use. We simply have to kill Caro with only special attacks. Actually, not that hard because poison doesn't count for some reason, so you can just poison her. Kill her that way, pretty much, but there we go. That's another three points for that one. Airs can't touch me done as well. Two points. This is really sad, guys. I'm so annoyed about this. I was in a member's world, and for some reason I thought Fire Wave is a free-to-play spell, but it is not. And that's my last giant key as well, unless I can somehow bash him to death with my Fire Staff, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Ugh, okay, we're gonna have to go get another one, I think. 
Okay, so we got most of the combat achievements done. I didn't really feel like killing hill giants to get a giant key just right now, but we should only have to do that last task and then we'll have the combat achievements done, or the easy ones at least. We're back at it again, more Hallowed Sepulchre, and with a really big level coming in that we're gonna get somehow from one of the traps actually. There is 85 agility, a massive level. We're slowly, slowly, slowly getting closer to that coveted 92 agility when this becomes one of the best skilling moneymakers in the game, but there's no point in rushing it. I will burn out so hard if we try to do this all in one go, but one level at a time is the way to do it, I think. Okay, so here's all the loot from another level. We're gonna sell it all off. That's gonna bring us 3.5 mil plus some money in the bank brings us up to nearly seven mil again. Ooh, there's another big level coming in. 86 agility, for some reason no pop-up. Wow, what the... We've done the third floor 628 times now. Holy moly. And here's the loot from another entire level. 85 to 86. Bring us another 3.2 mil plus uh, more money in the bank. Or once again, at a green cash stack. 10 mil. Now last week when I did the Tears of Gothic mini game, one thing I noticed right away is because I have so few quest points, I got kicked out in like 30 seconds, which means the amount of experience you can get is very limited. So I thought in the meantime, while I wait for my Tears of Gothics to come back, we might as well try to go ahead and complete some quests that I have access to with the chunks I have currently. There's a few quests I can do right away with no new chunk unlocks, and one of those is Prince Alley Rescue. That's a beautiful three quest points. That's really all I'm interested in right now. I don't even care about experience. We're just in it for quest points. Another free to play quest I can do right away with no new chunks required, Demon Slayer. Once again, for three whole quest points, free to play quests are super overpowered for that. And another kind of random one that isn't worth much, but I could do right away is actually Mistal and Mystery. Such a tease, I wish I could just take it. This one's only worth one quest point, but hey, everyone helps out. So surprisingly, that's actually the only quest I could really do right now without unlocking more chunks, which is Kind of crazy because I feel like I have a lot of the map unlocked, but that's it for now. The good thing though is I have 11 mil cash, which means we can unlock a new chunk, but which direction are we going to go? Now, if you want to know something that's even smoother than this transition, that would be your balls after using Manscaped's performance package, the sponsor of today's video. Manscaped are the leaders in below the waist grooming and the Performance Package 4.0 has everything you need to look good this summer. It's summer in Canada now technically and everything is literally on fire, but you know it won't be? Your balls when you use the Lawnmower 4.0. I'm sure everyone has had a few close calls in their day, but the Lawnmower uses a ceramic blade and this really helps reduce nicks and cuts. It's also waterproof so you can use it in the shower, the tub, the lake? I don't know. The performance package also comes with a ton of other things as well. The Crop Preserver, which is an aloe vera based soothing deodorant. It comes with probably the most comfortable boxers I've ever worn, and even a travel bag to store it all, plus there's tons more. Manscaped even now offers a luxury nail grooming kit, the Shears 2.0, which includes stainless steel nail cutters, tweezers, and even grooming scissors. So Manscaped has a lot to offer, now is a great time to try it out because they're actually offering a discount to my viewers. You can get 20% off plus free shipping just by using the code 20flipping at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping simply by entering the code 20flipping. And thanks again to Manscaped for supporting the channel and sponsoring the video. Well, there's a couple options, and regardless of which way I go, we're definitely going to be going down one of the precursor quest lines for Monkey Madness 2. And we got a couple options here. We got the Monkey Madness 1 quest line, which we'll have to do eventually, the Troll Stronghold quest line, which we'll have to do eventually, and the Watchtower quest line. Now, it doesn't really matter which quest line I go down because I'm going to need to finish them all eventually anyway. Now because Monkey Madness 1 and the Watchtower are pretty close physically and will require more chunks to get done, I'm just going to go ahead and try to finish up the Troll Stronghold questline. It should only require 4 chunks, it's completely isolated from everything else, and there's a few benefits to doing it anyway. So it's time to spend some of this cash and we're actually going to go ahead and buy the Berserker Ring. Because we're getting closer and closer now to be able to imbue the rings, I think it's a good time to start picking some of them up. They're kind of expensive right now, the Berserker Ring's going for 4 mil pretty much, but when we can imbue it, it's a massive upgrade. So we're going to grab it now and that's going to be another chunk unlock as well.
So we need to start off by doing Death Plateau, which we already have the start location unlocked thanks to Birthorp already being unlocked. And maybe we can just squeak by here. Is that a walkable chunk? It looks like it. Oh my God, look at that. We are a ninja. Not that this is really gonna help out that much. It'll just save me a chunk for like one second. But hey, we got the Tenzin's house with zero more chunk unlocks. All right, well, that didn't last very long. To complete Death Plateau, we gotta go a bit further into the mountains, and unfortunately, that requires us to unlock this chunk here, uh, which I don't even think there's much to mention about this. There's zero things here. I don't even think we unlock a troll to kill either. There's a mountain goat. I don't know if that does us any good, but most importantly, it gives us access to the path to Trollheim, and it allows us to complete this quest. Okay, there we go. Death Plateau is done. We get another quest point for that, which is nice. But now it's time to do Troll Stronghold. Troll Stronghold is going to require three more chunks to complete, but by doing it, it'll give us access to Trollheim, a new herb patch eventually. And probably most interestingly of all is we're going to be a single chunk away then from God Wars. God Wars is something that wasn't initially on my radar because I thought God Wars would be a wasted chunk. I mean, God Wars is an amazing boss for me to kill. The money per hour there can be amazing, but I thought that there was no quest locations that go there, but I was actually wrong. It turns out Desert Treasure 1 accesses that chunk, so we need to unlock it 100%, which means God Wars is potentially in our near future. So because I don't want to have to run all the way back to the Grand Exchange every single time, we're going to go ahead and buy three items at the same time and just finish up this quest. So we went for three 2 mil items, those being the Eternal Crystal, the Onyx, and the Uncut Onyx. All 100% useless items, but none of these chunks we're unlocking has almost any notable content beyond the Trollheim chunk. But this should allow us to complete Troll Stronghold. Now the first barrier here is unlocking the arena that you fight dad in. Probably only ever going to come here a single time and I don't think there's any other content. There might be uh, some trolls here though, so maybe we have now technically unlocked the troll task. Troll slayer task I should say. So that's pretty much it for this chunk, I don't think there's anything else useful here. We have to now move one more chunk to the north to unlock the Trollheim mountain. So the Trollheim Mountain does 100% have some thrower mountain trolls in it, so if we get a Troll Slayer task in the future, we can have do it realistically. God Wars is right there, we're so close now, but we're not going to go that direction yet. Now with our final item, we're going to unlock probably the most important chunk here of the four, and that's the actual physical troll stronghold chunk. This will give us access to a few notable things, mainly the herb patch, which we'll unlock eventually. There's some content in the troll stronghold as well. We now actually have a pretty decent spot to kill trolls in. These mountain trolls here, you can cannon or just kill them straight up. Maybe I'll take some time to explore the actual stronghold a bit, see if there's any interesting content in here that maybe we could make some money with, but I have my doubts. <laughs> Okay, so there we go. There is the Troll Stronghold questline done with. Another quest point for that bad boy. That's pretty much it. Although I think we actually might be able to complete Edgar's Ruse as well. I think we have all the chunks done for that. And it would be pretty nice to unlock the Trollheim Teleport. Okay, so we're back for revenge. We finally got ourselves another Giant's Key. I'm not messing around. We're just killing this in the member's world. All we have to do is kill it one more time to get five Obor kills. And with that, we will have completed the easy combat achievements. There we go, easy tier done with, which means we can now go ahead and claim our Gommel's Hilt, which actually will be kind of handy. And most importantly, our coveted 5,000 experience lamp. There we go, Gommel gave us our antique lamp, which in hindsight, should I have waited to grab this? I can't do Tears of Gothics for like three more days. <sighs> I feel like every other lamp in the game you can destroy and reclaim, but I'm so nervous about this. I don't, I can't get rid of this lamp. Okay, so it turns out uh, I was actually smart to be skeptical here. Every other quest lamp in the game, if you destroy, you can go ahead and reclaim it from some NPC. The major exception being this antique lamp. If you destroy it, it's gone forever. Just an FYI, don't destroy the antique lamp you get from combat achievements. You will not get it back. Okay, so for the next week, we're just going to be a kind of pseudo-Ultimate Iron Man. This lamp is just going to chill here. What are we going to do about it? Nothing. 
Now I think we actually have all of the chunks required to do Edgar's Ruse, which would be really nice. We'll get the Trollheim Teleport. Okay, so here's the reason why I actually claim the Gommel's Hilt, because we can actually teleport to Trollheim. Super handy uh, for people who haven't actually done the quest yet. Saves me a ton of time, and we can do this three times a day, which is perfect for the quest. Oh my god, first try, easy. We're gonna try to grab a second one too while we're here, because we need it for, I think, one or two more quests. Oh my god, this method is so good. There we go, two done already. Alright, Edgar, there we go. We are done with Edgar's Ruse. One quest point for that which is nice, plus a bunch of Herblore experience, uh, getting us to 42, and bring our quest points up to 63. So our Tears of Gothic should already last like 15% longer. Oh, what? Oh no, you don't get the Herb Patch yet, that's sad. All right, we've been saving up so many of these Hallowed Marks, uh, we're gonna go ahead and actually spend some of them. We have 2100, which means we can get 21 Hallowed Sacks, which should be another 1.5, 2 mil cash right there. We'll go ahead and open all these up. So we dumped all of that for about 3 mil, so we have 3.4 mil to work with. Now with this money, we're going to make a very small detour, and that is going to be to complete Goblin Diplomacy. Why do we need to do that? Well, quest points. Not only are we going to get 5 for Goblin Diplomacy, but it will also allow us to do Lost Tribe and Death to the Dorgishin, which will give us even more quest points, plus unlock a entire underground city, which could have some interesting content in it. So we're going to go for the Black Tourmaline Core, about a 2 mil item. Okay, nobody saw that. So we want to unlock the Goblin Village chunk, but as you just saw, um, the path in here is really wonky. Oh my god, that's not a walkable tile. What the f- oh, that's so annoying. Technically, this chunk isn't connected by that side path there, so we actually have to unlock this stupid one here. Well, that's annoying. There's nothing here. There's- well, we can do Doric's quest now, I guess. We are one step closer to Falador, which is cool. There's another quest start location here, I guess, so we might as well just go ahead and start beneath Ice Mountain. Okay, so for circumstances like this where I get screwed over by pathing, I'll usually go ahead and try to buy the cheapest item I can, and the Lava Dragon Mask is, well, that fits the bill. This thing looks insane, what the hell. Kinda look like I'm some hobbit trying to sneak past some orcs right now, but that's a 1.5 mil item we're gonna chuck in the bank, although the fashion scape is unmatched. Okay, well, one of the side benefits is we can complete Doric's quest, which is another quest point. We'll take it. First, Doric has to sass us a little bit for having all the items already. There we go. We got one more quest point for that bad boy. So the Goblin Village chunk doesn't have a lot to offer. We have technically unlocked the Ruins of Kemdozel, but I don't think there's any way to get there from this chunk. We'll have to unlock a few other surrounding ones. Honestly, the best part about this chunk is probably the five quest points we get for doing Goblin Diplomacy. Absolutely massive. Bring us up to 69. Now with that done, we can finally actually do the Lost Tribe quest, something I've had unlocked for a long time, but I haven't been able to do it because Goblin Diplomacy is a prerequisite. And this will unlock the Lumbridge Underground. Okay, there we go. Lost Tribe is done with one more quest point for that, bringing this up to 70 quest points. And I think we already have all the chunks required now to do Death to the Dorgishin. There we go. Death to the Dorgishin is done as well. That will give us one quest point, plus a bit of experience on top of that. And the most interesting part about this is actually we get access to Dorgish Khan. Dorgish Khan is a interesting city. For the most part, the content in there is pretty much all dead content. There's some really obscure money makers, but they're pretty low GP per hour. There are some training methods I think I'm going to take advantage of eventually, and we're going to explore this city more, but to begin with here, there's actually just one thing I want to do, and that's turn in all of these long bones I've been stacking up. We have a half an inventory of long bones we can turn in, and for each one, we're going to get a bit of GP, but most importantly, construction experience, giving us nearly 70k construction XP, which actually gets us a level, bringing us to 67 construction. That's all pretty much through Hallowed Sepulchre training, which is insane. So whenever I'm feeling a little bit too happy, you know, things are going well, I decide let's just go ahead and try to knock out one single runecrafting level to really bring myself back down. So we're going to try to finish off an entire runecrafting level worth of blood runecrafting. It should take me about 7 or 8 hours, we're going to make a good amount of money from it. It's just so, so terribly slow. 
Okay, we didn't make it all the way through the level, but something way more exciting happened. We can finally do my second round of Tears of Gothics. With more quest points, we'll be able to collect hopefully more tiers. We should be able to stay in here for about 25-30% longer. Okay, this time we got 50 tiers, which is a bit more, and that'll bring us 900 Hunter experience. That should be enough, that brings us to 16 Hunter. Ah, technically, we need one more level. I think it'll be okay though, if we just go ahead and buy a Hunter Potion, which are really, really expensive for some reason, we should be able to boost to catch a Baby Impaline with a Butterfly Net. From there, we just simply catch Baby Impalines until level 20. From there, we can use our XP Lamp finally, get rid of that, which should get us close enough to be able to catch Swamp Lizards. So because we have access to Zenarius, we can access Puro Puro anytime from here. Okay, 17 to enter. Can we boost to get through? Uh, you can't. Okay, that's annoying. That's going to make things a bit more interesting. So I'm pretty sure you can boost to catch an Impaline, but you can't boost to get to Puro Puro where pretty much all the Implines are. So we need to come up with another plan. Okay, plan B is to simply find them in the wild. We have a couple hunter potions, some butterfly nets, and I think this is a location where Implines spawn in. I don't I haven't really done this very much. So the plan is to just keep hopping worlds until we can find a baby Implane, catch it for 20 hunter experience, and then keep going. I think we need to find like a dozen baby Implanes, which could take a while. Oh my god, I finally found one. There it is. So first up, you can boost to catch one of these, right? Ah, yes, there we go. 20 Hunter experience for that. Oh, we just have to catch 10 more, apparently. Because <laughs> that actually only took me about half an hour, luckily. So we caught 10 of them, which got us 17 Hunter, which is the level you actually need to catch them. So with that level, we can actually enter Puro Puro, which will make this process way quicker. Oh my god, look at all these Implanes. Okay, so the plan is you simply find a baby Implane spawn, catch it, and just wait for it to respawn. It only takes a few seconds. Each time we're getting... 18 hunter experience. Hmm. Maybe I should have brought freezes. Okay, so this one in the corner is definitely the way to go. We brought some freeze runes just in case it decides it wants to fly away, but for the most part, it'll just kind of hug the wall, which is fine. Not a particularly quick method, but with Puro Puro Unlocked, this just became a lot more viable. We're getting about 8 or 9k experience per hour, so this really shouldn't take too long. Alright, so this should be the final baby emblem we'll need to catch ever, probably. Oh wait, never mind. Math is hard. One more, I guess. There we go, that is 20 Hunter, and that kind of marks the end of the really slow Hunter grind. It took a long time to get here actually, but now that we have 20, we should be pretty much set to go. So finally, after holding onto this lamp for a long time, we can finally chuck it into Hunter. 5,000 Hunter experience, which will get us from level 20 to 26, which actually works out perfectly because Swamp Lizards require 29, and we can get a plus 3 boost from the Hunter Potion, and that means we're Pretty much done with the butterfly net. Okay, we're not quite at 79 at rune crafting. We almost made it. We're only 35k off. I just didn't want to do the final hour. We have a ton of blood runes stacked up from the grind though. 25k. Plus we have a ton of herbs as well. 350 quorum. We have almost no money, but that will be fixed very shortly. So the quorums that we can sell for 1.2 mil. We've been farming up a storm. And the blood runes. 5 mil for those bad boys, bring us up to 6 mil. So that roundabout way we had to train Hunter was really just to save myself some chunks, but we do still need to unlock the one, and we're gonna do that by buying the Dragon Plate Body. Can't wear it yet, apparently you need Dragon Slayer 1, okay. It's a 3 mil item, so a little pricier, that will still leave us with some money left over though. The Merchant tab is looking really sweet right now, 135 mil in it. Honestly just the color aesthetic, just it looks nice. So there's the Mauritania Hunter chunk unlocked. That will of course unlock Swamp Lizards, a quest location for Desert Treasure 1, among maybe a few others. I explored the chunk though, beyond that there's not much else here. But we have what we wanted and that is Swamp Lizards. So to place the traps right now we do have to drink a Hunter Potion. I'm not sure if it'll auto fail the trap if you fall below 29 Hunter, but we're gonna try to keep our boost active the entire time. Alright, so we're out of Hunter Potions, but that's okay. With that Swamp Lizard caught, there is 29 Hunter, which means we're pretty much ready to go with the more conventional Hunter grind all the way to 60. This trading method is so quick now in comparison, we're getting like 30k Hunter experience per hour, 
We're already up to level 40 Hunter, which means we can place three traps. This will increase our experience rate even more. Okay, that is level 50 Hunter. We're now able to catch Eclectic Implanes, and that's given me a bit of a thought. Catching Implanes in Piro Piro is actually a really good money maker, so I think if I unlock a few more Implanes to catch, I'm gonna try that out. Like, Dragon Implanes right now are worth 400k, Magpies are like 30 or 40k, Eclectics are 6k. There's definitely some money to be made in there. So we're taking a quick break from Swamp Lizards to do a little Piro Piro. Oh my god, we caught a baby Implane by accident. The method is very similar. We simply are going to camp an Eclectic Implane spawn. Right now, these are worth, I think, 6,000 each. So there we go, we got a full inventory and it's worth uh, about 110,000 gold. So this might already on its own be about 600, 700k per hour, but if you mix in Magpie Implanes, Dragon Implanes once we get the level, the money per hour I think would be quite good. Okay, that is the final Swamp Lizard. That is going to be 60 Hunter. That took probably four or five hours, but we're done. The Hunter grind is done for now at least. There's that rune crafting level we spent hours getting, 79 rune crafting. Hmm, we can now make blood bark interesting. Uh, might not do that, but we have the option. So we have more blood runes and quorms to sell, and after dumping those, we're up to a five mil cash stack once again. And I think it's finally time to deal with our final skill requirement. That's just crafting. We only have to get a single crafting level, which is nice. To do it, we're gonna do a very simple money maker. We're simply gonna make uh, diamond bracelets. That's the final one there. There is 70 crafting, and that means we are now done with all of the skill requirements for Monkey Bandits 2. Plus, we made a little money from that as well. Can't complain about that. So that means we only have quest requirements left. So in the next episode, we have to deal with three major quests. The Watchtower quest, Monkey Bandits 1, and the Eyes of Glorfi. That's where we're going to have to burn the majority of our chunks, and it's going to be kind of expensive. We're going to have to unlock Yanil, Apatol, parts of Karamja, the Tree Gnome Village. Uh, we're going to have to be spending a lot of money. There's a lot to unlock and we're going to have to figure out what is going to be the most efficient way to unlock it all. Because each chunk, it's going to cost us and things are getting more and more expensive. Here's a final look at the list as of today. Pretty much the entire collection of 1 to 2 mil items are completely bought out already. We're mostly moving on to 2 to 3 mil items and 4 mil items now. So. Every chunk is now two to three times more expensive than when we started, and things are only going to get exponentially worse. Anyway, thanks for watching as always guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next episode. Now before I go here, I want to give a giant thank you to all of my members over on YouTube. Thank you so much to Aleandra, Mitch Reinders, The Hybrid, and Kush Patel for all being subscribed at the Dragon Tier. You guys are awesome. I do really appreciate it. Also, thank you to Kapersky, YoYoSub89, and NDM0001 for being subscribed at the Runite tier. Thanks everyone again, and I'll see you next time.